Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless with Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. We're here at Blade Show 2022 down in Atlanta. We are at the Reef booth. Stu, what's up buddy? What's going on brother? Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic. Hey, thank you for having us. I really appreciate it. You know, to kick this off, I want to say I've been watching you now for a couple of years. I've seen some little collaborations, things that you've been doing with other, maybe social media or other people to kind of give you some influence, help you out a little bit, give you some feedback. Now you've gone through a ton of iterations. You started early on, huge amount of 3D printing to make yeah. sure you got your designs right. Talk just a little bit about that process. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when we were R&Ding these knives, the 3D printer was absolutely essential because you know we, we knew what steel we wanted, we knew, what, we knew what our heat treat was going to be like. We knew what handle material we needed. What we didn't know was what the form was going to be like, right? So, you know, it's easy with, with knife designing to come up with an outline. Um, but what we, what we knew that a lot of companies ignore was the handle comfort. So what we, what we did is, you know, took advantage of that 3D printer because every time we make a small, tiny change in the CAD model, we print it so that we know exactly what it's doing. And if we don't like something, then we go back in and change it. A little too thin here, a little too thick there. We can print new scales. On the F4 handle, I probably did, I don't know, at least 50 iterations. And there was probably 100 prints of just the, of just those 50 iterations, you know, between the, the ones that we sent out to testers before we even made an, before we even made a real knife. You know, we sent a bunch of 3D printers, prints out to, uh, right. to people in the field just to get their feedback on how it felt in their hand because, you know, that's the place where you interface with the knife the most. So it's just very important. So. No, and I'm glad you, you said all the things that you said because the first thing I'm going to point out is you literally don't have to handle these knives to know that it's going to be the perfect ergonomics. You can tell just by looking that they have thought about all the contours, no hot spots, the ability to index in multiple positions along that handle without anything that's gonna cause any sort of hot spot in, in with hard use, that's the other thing. Hard use, fixed blade knives, made for the remote wilderness, adverse conditions, and even in some cases, tactical applications. So Absolutely. with this handle, I mean, you definitely nailed it, and you can see that all that hard work and that sort of R&D upfront has made a huge difference. So talk to us about your model lines and go through them just so that people know kind of what you have here on the table. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we kicked off the company with our F-Series. Um, so this is our F6. This this particular knife has a six inch blade with a five and a quarter inch handle. We have a 3 16 steel, uh, steel stock on there, CPM 3V at a 5860 Rockwell hardness. So that's our, that's our F6. This is really designed to be your all around camp knife. Um, pretty much able to do any task. And, you know, a lot of times when you get a knife with a six inch blade, it's, uh, it's really blade heavy because guys are trying to make a, ch a small chopper. We didn't try to do that. This, the balance here is right over the index finger. And so, you know, it, it's able to do a lot, including chop, because you can choke back on this handle, you know, and you can, you can, really, get, you can really get some good power behind that. So that's the F6. And we'll move on to the, the F4. So the F4, this is our F4 Bushcraft Survival Knife. So again, CPM 3V at 5860 Rockwell. This steel stock is a 530 seconds, is 530 seconds thick, so it's a little thinner. We have a high saber grind, so we get a, we get a long sharpening life, um, but we still have plenty of durability, you know, if you need to do some hard use tasks with it, like batoning through wood or, or anything like that. We, we, uh, we have a longer handle on here than what you might traditionally find on a four inch blade. And the reason for that is <clears throat> we, these handles are, they're what people would call a Coke bottle ha shaped handle. So your palm swells at the front. And the reason for that is your longer fingers are at the front are at the front of the handle. So it just makes a lot of sense to have the palm swell forward rather than right in the middle of the knife. But at the same time, with that little bit of extra length, you can even choke back on this and use it to do some, some like clean up on limbs if you need to, or do some light chopping. It also gives you more options for how you, want, how you might want to hold the knife, as well as it leaves some extra length out the back if you need to use that for cracking nuts or, or uh, hammering tent spikes or whatever you're gonna use it for. And it's interesting that you say that 
because I personally myself like to design with slightly longer handles. Yeah. And the additional thing that you get, if you can, and I would say should use this for light batoning. You're not yeah, gonna right. you're not gonna span a super wide log, right. but that helps you with a little bit of leverage. Right, get your you, hand out of the way. Get your too. hand out of the way. You're not gonna drag your knuckles down the wood. You're not gonna smash your knuckles yeah. in, and it helps you with that leverage to keep the nice the knife nice and balanced as you work your way down yeah. through the log. So I'm always a big fan of a slightly longer handle, and I think you nailed it. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Good with gloves too. Yeah. So what are these little guys? So these aren't these aren't actually out on the market yet. Um, but here, let me show you. Let me show you my personal favorite color combo here. So these are our F3 XCs. So about a three-inch blade. We went a little under three inches, like 2.97 inches, because uh, we wanted them to be a good EDC. Um, so you know, you still have a very tough woods survival knife. Uh, just at a very small, on a very small scale, and able to, to carry around town whenever you want to, straight into the woods. Um, the, so we're gonna have, we're gonna be launching these in, in two variations. One's gonna be the XC, which is what we have here. The XC has a stouter tip than the DC. Okay. So extreme conditions, stouter tip, and a Cerakote. Nice. Now, we grind the Cerakote off the, off the spine so that we can still strike our ferro rod. Absolutely. With the matching with the matching hardware there look just looks real nice and that's eighth inch that's eighth inch cpm 3v also 5860. i'm glad you brought that up because i was thinking this did look about eighth inch so even a little bit thinner it's going to yeah. keep it nice and slicey and it's funny because the topic has come up a couple times with us throughout the show as we're looking at other makers yeah. you know what the theme for me is nice front carry pocket fixed blade i love it there you go right so is that actually, is that uh, one of your sheaths? Is this going to be something that's available? We, we are looking at different options for, for uh, pocket carry sheaths at this time, yeah. Smart. Yeah. Smart. I love so it. So we, we're going to have, we have belt carry sheaths, which are, oh, whatever. Yeah, they're, they're here. So this was one of the first, this is one of the original um, examples of, of this. Uh, it's not Cerakoted, it's just stonewashed. Stonewashed, tumbled stone. finish. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. It was just, it was just, uh, like one of the very early samples but so the xc has the cerakote it has a stouter tip the dc which i don't have an example of here yet stands for daily carry that'll have a finer tip and it'll come with our, our standard acid stonewash finish like this beautiful well so i mean Thank these you. are uh, some of the offerings that you have sort of currently and things that are currently in the works mm -hmm. got anything Coming up, what's the what are this, the next iteration? I'm assuming you're going to expand into other blade styles, blade shapes. And Absolutely. For for the most part, right now you're kind of like a drop point and a little bit of like a clip point style. Right. But you, what's what's pretty, the move? Pretty forward? traditional, pretty simple. Yeah. Um, we have one more that's gonna that's gonna come in this line in the F series. Okay. Um, and then we have we're working on three different uh, designs that could would probably be considered a little more tactical. Nice. Um, and on a couple of those, we're working with some active Navy SEALs oh, wow. uh, to be able to be sure that we get it right for, for people who are actually going to be using them out in the field for tactical purposes. Right. Um, and then we also have a few EDC, more like traditionally EDC style designs that are, uh, that are in the works. And uh, we do have uh, aspirations to get into folders here maybe in a, in a few years. So, you know, we want to. We're trying to build a, a full, well-rounded line of, of knives, um, but that fit that fit our brand. You know, we're we're an outdoor company. We right. want to be. We want to be sure that whatever we build will translate to the outdoors appropriately. So, yeah. Well, you've done it so far. So, Stu. Thank you very much. Ah, great to be here. And if if this is like some of the other conversations I I've had, um, we're all growing. Yeah. And it's going to be neat to be here in a year and yeah. see where you've taken this company a year from now. Yeah, so really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity to be on, on the show, man. Absolutely. Take care. Uh, you too.